What up players, it's Warboss Tay back up in this mud and welcome to how to paint big spooky heavily armed and armored skeleton warrior part 3. Uh, today let me show you the colors that we're going to be working with as we're painting up our Krell. We've got dark flesh, ice blue, <laughs> chaos black, Codex Gray, Shining Gold, Bleached Bone, Bad Dab Black, and Red Gore. So the first thing we're gonna do is also, um, you know what I'm also gonna add in there? Deneb Stone. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our bleached bone. In step one, we're going to start repainting, or touching up at least, some of the bone areas as well as the yellow fur trim on the cloak. So let's get up in there and start with the bones. I love this figure, I think it's great. Some of it is still just a big old fine cast mess though. Like these skulls on his trophy rack. Miscast of the wazoo. It's okay, hopefully we'll just kind of paint them well enough that you can't really tell. But, um, yeah, oh boy. They look pretty bad. It's always best to go with really thin coats and go with multiple applications rather than one main coat that just gets slapped on. I've always, I've never liked, you know, paint that was just too thick. Even though you get great coverage the first time and you just move on to the next step, I thought it was just, you know, it's too, it's too messy. I'd much rather see a good sort of blend. Have you take your time. All right, next we're gonna take our bleached bone and we are going to paint very thin lines down the uh, down each horn on his helmet. So let's get this into focus. Don't worry as you get towards the tips, that's not what's important. What's important is getting these strong, thin lines near the base where the horn meets the helmet. As you get further down towards the tip of the horn, just fill that in.
actually not important where how you keep um, painting these lines once you get down to about halfway because we're going to we're going to change the color up in the horns at this curve it's just down at the base where it meets the helmet where you really want to get a good strong and definite pattern going Okay, we'll let that dry, we'll come back to that. Continue painting with your bleached bone all the way down, hitting all the bone areas. Some of you might prefer to do a uh, dry brush. sometimes. I found with the teeth, it's good to just kind of stab the paint on rather than trying to paint each individual tooth. highlighting so you don't have to paint the entire length of each finger bone. You just want to see a bit of the color picked up on the base color. Alright, next what we're going to do is we are going to take our dark flesh and we are going to water it down and then paint it on each side of the horn near the tips specifically though on the left side The reason you want to water it down on your wet palette is because you don't want to see where or you want to kind of blend it so you can't really tell where the dark flesh ends and the true deneb stone and bleached bone begin. So this is going to take some eyeballing, especially if you haven't done this before, to find where that sweet spot is, but just keep at it and you'll get it. And then we're, we're gonna fudge this transition even more in just a little while with some more um, bad at black wash. But for now, you can kind of see that it's kind of the look we want. While the dark flesh is drying, we're going to take our den of stone and we're going to start highlighting the cloak. Now when highlighting the cloak, you want to take a look at, because it's such a, it's supposed to be a dirty, decrepit piece of war gear, you want to use this as a highlight and that is a separate color 
that makes sense. You want it to look like it's being highlighted up from the original color. And you want you still want the cloak to look old and well worn. So try to look at just the places where the light picks it up and spread your paint across it. Especially if you water down your denim stone, if you water it down too much and you can see that the consistency is just really off. Just get a little bit more denim stone on your get a little bit more paint on your brush for cleaning it up off on the palette. back to work. Remember, you can always build up. It's harder, much harder to fix a mistake where you put too much paint on your brush. So I'm just eyeballing it. And on the inside, you could really just limit it to where you see the folds are, since the folds really catch the light. And then just spread out the rest of the paint. All right, hey, um, I didn't really realize that the, the video ran out, so I, I painted this whole next section without even recording it. Um, I just took some bleached bone for this step, and I painted the trim. I highlighted the trim, let me show you what I did. I went down to the tips of each of these little pieces of fur. Let's get in focus there and just really lightly over each one, get that bleached bone color on each one. You're gonna notice when you look at the 360 figure of Krell on Games Workshop's website that um, it's darker and in different colors in some places than other. So we're gonna take our Chaos Black and we're going to, well first we're gonna take our, our um, Dark Flesh because this is gonna come first and we're gonna water it down a whole lot just like we did with our um, horns on the helmet, then we are going to drag that through the center all the way down to the bottom. And you want it in a very uh, watery, almost like a wash kind of consistency. So you want it to come down the center and looks like all the way down to the bottom. <laughs> there we go. And while that's drying, we're gonna take our red gore. We're gonna water that down a lot as well. Then we're gonna use this to stain the bottom of the cloak. So take a look on the Games Workshop website if you want to see what I mean, but it's just a bunch of blood stains.
Looks like it's even darker than this. Plus I think I didn't thin down my my paint enough. It should really be really thin to make it look like it's basically just a stain we're painting on rather than an actual paint. you do as long as you have a good you have it watered down so it doesn't look like you're actually painting something on but rather just staining guide online on how to paint Krell on Games Workshop's website to the standard of what they have on the product page in the 360 view so I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants hoping that I'll get 
you know, the correct recipe. I actually think this, uh, going back with the denim stone is actually a good step. Kind of adds a little bit of randomness to, to the blood stains. I wonder if he needs, um, I don't know, like another color. Maybe that might help. Another color red. To break up what's already there and make it not look as old. Or fresh, I mean, to make it look a little older, that's what I meant to say. Hmm. I'm going to try giving it a other bad at black wash. See how that works. Yeah, it works pretty nicely, I think. Right, so we're gonna leave it at that. Yeah, that looks awesome. Okay, that looks awesome. All right. Ah! Hey, hey, uh, in the interest of time, for this next section, I kind of skipped over it. It's pretty simple. I just took some Chaos Black and I watered it down a lot and I just dragged it down the center where you have... You should see like the yellow with the bleached bone and then inside that lighter or that darker red uh, kind of dark flesh tone and then in the center a very watered down Chaos Black. I also took... I do what else did I do? Oh, I took my shining gold and I highlighted the gold armor. And I already did it, but let me show you just kind of how I did it. I put a little bit of gold on my paintbrush and then I just kind of dragged it across the sides and down. So I tried to leave some of that some of that dwarf bronze color in the recesses and that um that bad at black wash as much as possible. Okay, before we get to the ice blue, 
we're actually going to take some uh, hot turquoise now and we're going to add in the verdigris at this point rather sooner rather than later just because it's so much fun so i'm putting my hot turquoise in my wet palette and then i'm watering it down and now i'm going to find all the different places where we can put it and specifically in the red armor because it looks like they really went to town on the um on the model in the picture so we will too get a really ghostly glowing look especially the helmet the helmet I don't know if all this is supposed to be natural verdigris or if some of it is supposed to be magical. I'm painting like where the crest of the helmet. Oh, back here you've got a lot of... Basically anywhere where you see pock marks in the armor corrosion holes and across the chest place is a big piece And it also looks like there's verdigris in the metal parts of the armor too. Accent color. It's just so spot on. Look at that. Okay, next thing we're going to do. is we're gonna take uh, Chaos Black, we're gonna water it down, and then we're going to paint it onto the edge of the horn. You really want it watered down because you kinda wanna see the, that dark flesh showing underneath as well. On the other side, 
we're just gonna paint inside the horn and then just around the very edge. flesh just a little bit on the horn to get to get a smoother transition so here's another little mistake that I'm going to be fixing in real time right now right before your eyes as we speak now and then come back and we're going to wrap up by doing the ice blue on the axe. All right, in the last part of this video, I uh, kind of jumped ahead because I had to test something out, wasn't sure if it was going to work or not, and it did. So now I'm going to tell you what I did and uh, demonstrate it for you so you, uh, you can kind of replicate it. Something that I noticed on the Games Workshop website that was uh, when I was looking at this guy was that there is so much highlights on everything, like the armor, and um, I noticed that there was like really fine highlights on the edges of the armor that wasn't red at all, like the armor was red. So I was like, what's the best way to do that? So I used Codex Gray, but actually a better color to use is Space Wolves Gray. So what you need to do is get a little bit of it and really water it down on your wet palette or wipe, you know, the majority of it off. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna just edge highlight it as if you were edge highlighting a space marine and just edge highlight their armor all of the sharp lines and anything that would normally reflect light so like all the hard edges like here on the knee pad and the armor down here what you're also going to be doing is picking certain rust spots and you're going to be tracing the outlines of them in Space Wolves Gray. There's so much and you want the viewer to be able to see them uh, only on the only going to be doing this on the red armor. Okay, and here's the some more red armor for the shoulder pad. For this one on this side, and then oops, sorry about that. And then um, yeah, so you kind of see how their space was gray in different parts even if you look on the games workshop website 
even in some of the rust holes that have hot turquoise and in our verdigris, there's a little bit of, of uh, whiteness in there, which I think is trying to represent some kind of ghostly glow. Um, so you could do that if you want as well. Um, but yeah, I think that just really makes him pop even more. And then you're gonna take the space was gray and you're just going to paint in thin straight lines all of the fur to just highlight all of that. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, which should be the last, is we're gonna take our ice blue and we're going to thin it down in our wet palette and we are going to build up the axe half. So you see all of these faces on the axe haft. Just gonna drag, drag our ice blue across all of the, um, all of the faces. So for this, I'm just putting the majority of the paint on the tip of my brush, and then I'm just dragging it. Oops, sorry, dragging it the sides so that the ice blue covers the uppermost details and leaves the hot turquoise in the recesses. It creates great depth. Okay, so you have something like this. And then as a last touch, we're going to take a little bit more our space was gray and we are going to mix it into the ice blue on our wet palette and then we're going to drag that across the top as well. But for this you only want to go at one angle and what that's going to do is it's going to create um, a really fine almost whitish highlight only on a certain part of the axe which is what's going to make it look awesome okay so there you go that's just about going to do it the last thing i'm going to do is paint the gems on the axe and i'm going to do those in red so just like for how we painted the gems on the lizard man we're going to use um Red Gore, Blood Red, Blazing Orange, and then um, some glass varnish. I don't think I gave these colors in the beginning. It's all right. I just remembered it now, and I don't want to wait till we do it. Video number four. I think we're just about done with this guy. Awesome. Well, you freak me out, man. You freak me out. Right, and then we're gonna glass varnish these gems and I'm gonna uh, base him up and then we're gonna wrap up this video in um, just a minute. So stay tuned for that. All right, players, uh, one last thing I wanna show you. I, as you can see, I based my Krell up to match with my other undead forces. But um, I wanted to show you how I did the War Boss Tay runic effect on the ax. I did it for the blade, so you can kind of see what we're going for. And then I'm gonna demonstrate it now. I'm gonna show it to you on the runes on the inside. And as you can see, it's kind of like a, we're taking that hot turquoise glow from the outside and we're, we're building it up so that it almost glows white. This is what we're kind of going for. I kind of did it on the side. So remember, we already painted the runes and the edges hot turquoise. So the colors you're going to need for this last steps are ice blue and space wolves gray. So you're going to take your ice blue first and thin it down a lot so that you've only got some on the edge of your edge of your brush, your finest tipped brush, and then you are going to trace the runes. Once 
when you're doing it on the blade, you don't want to do the whole thing. You want to go um, trace a little bit and then get that light blue color on it and then leave the rest in that hawk turquoise color. What that's going to do is it's going to create this optical illusion that the eye is going to um, think that parts of parts of the axe are glowing brighter than others or that there is magical there's that magical energy that's um, flowing over the axe which is what we want all right and then we're going to take our space wheels gray right off camera and then for the outer edge of the axe you're just going to fill in the center of what you just did like so oops it's not even on camera like so so it's going to create every once in a while this glowing effect on the inside though can be a little bit more liberal with where you where you paint that, the center of the glow. You don't want it too much though. But you can be a little bit more free with it. If we were just to do the space wolves gray, then it wouldn't it wouldn't look as um, natural. But by having that general, or I'm sorry, general not general gradual fade from hawk turquoise to ice blue to space wolves gray, we get a very awesome looking glowing effect. This is basically the principle that we use with our crystal swords technique too, um, but on a much smaller scale. So there he is, players. This is part three. This is the end. The end of an era. Krell is ready to hit the clubs with Igor and Lewis. Score some hot chicks at the clubs downtown. Thanks for watching. Please leave me a comment. Don't forget to like and um, yeah, subscribe if you're not already. Let me know what you think. Are there any questions that you have on anything that I did? Is there anything that you want me to clarify for you? Um, let me know. I tried to stick as closely to the GW color scheme as possible without going all heavy metal and doing like a million billion steps uh, and thinning down like so many washes of uh, thinning down the paints into so many steps. I mean, I tried to keep it as simple as possible for new painters as well as uh, veteran ones to get a Krell done up in a day. I mean, I did this in a day's worth, so considering that I'm also filming and posting on YouTube and stuff. I, I think that this was a good job for a day's work. So let me know what you think and um, we'll see you in the next video. Latest players!